When the 1990 Toyota Tarago was released in 1990, its rounded jelly bean shape made you think that this is what cars in the 21st century were going to look like. The future had arrived and now, 30 something years later, Hyundai have proved them right with the Staria. There really is nothing else on the road at the moment that looks quite like Astaria. It's retrofuturism at its best, especially with that thin LED that spans the width of the car at the front. It's such an eye-catching look. In profile, this car's tinted windows does make it look a little bit like something you'd expect federal police to be tailing the prime minister in, but its little 18 inch wheels do make it look a little bit van like, and that is actually primarily what this car is. It's a van that does double duty as a people mover. But this elite model also scores twin powered sliding doors, which can be controlled remotely from the key fob. I really like it how pixels are starting to become a bit of a recurring design theme for Hyundai. We saw them very prominently in the Ionic 5 and they're in the back of the Staria 2 with these really good looking light clusters. If you put a tow bar on the back, you get two and a half tonnes of brake towing capacity and underneath the powered tailgate, we get an 831 litre storage space, which can be expanded by a further 500 litres with the third row of seats down. Under the bonnet, we've got a 3.5 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine, which outputs 200 kilowatts of power and 331 newton metres of torque. It drives its power to the front wheels only via an eight speed automatic transmission. There is also a all wheel drive diesel version available. The cockpit of the Staria also is a bit of a nod to the Tarago with its wide, clean, swooping lines and this centre console that kind of sticks out in the middle a little bit. There is a lot of scratchy plastic though, it's not the most luxe cabin you're going to find. The centre console screen is 10.25 inches and in a cabin this size that actually feels a bit small. It's also not angled at the driver, it's kind of mostly facing the rear seat passengers. And that makes it just feel a little bit far away and a little bit not very user friendly from the driver's point of view. The software it runs is pretty much the standard Hyundai software, but in this case it doesn't appear to have been radically updated from the iLoad because there's a couple of times when it shows graphics of this car, only it doesn't look anything like it, it looks like an old iLoad van. There's also Apple CarPlay and Android Auto available, but you will need a USB to run them. One thing we do get that is certainly very handy is a 360 degree virtual camera where you can see every angle of the van when you're parking, that's a big help. We've got shortcut buttons for the centre console screen underneath that and then the climate controls, there's two zones of climate control in this car, one for the front, one for the back. There's no knobs maddeningly in this car so you can't easily change the volume or adjust the temperature without taking your eyes off the road which is a little bit annoying wireless phone charging just on a little shelf underneath that. Then we've got a little push out tray here with one cup holder in the middle and then there's two more underneath this sliding door in the centre console. Hyundai have been rolling out push button transmissions in some of their more performance oriented cars lately and I'm not really a fan because I don't think it really adds anything to the sporty feel of a performance car. But here in the Staria, I think it actually makes perfect sense because no matter how you drive this car, you're not really ever going to be in a hurry. And it does make for a uh, lot less clutter here on the centre console. One thing I really am missing is somewhere to rest my left arm. There's no armrest attached to the seat and the centre console here in the middle is just way too low. And there's actually no armrest there at all. It's hard plastic. But underneath the slidey door here you do get a mountain of storage room, so deep it feels like it's almost going through to the centre of the earth. There's a couple more cup holders here, these are actually removable to give you even more room. There is a glove box here, but it's tiny. I mean you could have a huge glove box in this car, you could have a giant drawer like they do in the Ionic 5, but instead we've got a tiny little glove box with barely room for an instruction manual. The digital instrument cluster is unique to this car. I haven't seen this in any other Hyundai and I think it looks really good. It's more of that retro futuristic style with 80s style readouts for the Speedo and the Taco and this really interesting design here in place of actual dials. I, I actually really like it. It doesn't really change very much though when you change drive modes. It just turns red when you're in sport mode. 
But if you go into the center console screen settings, there is actually an option to change the cluster design, only all of the options are actually grayed out and you can't change them. So again, I don't know if that's a case of Hyundai not updating this system specifically for this car or what's going on. The steering wheel is straight out of the i30 sedan and I think it's actually a bit too small for this car. You have to do a lot of turning to get around corners and just something a little bit larger might be nice. But having said that, it is a very nice steering wheel with a bit of stitching and a fake leather wrap. I don't think it's real. Window controls and mirror controls up here on the windowsill, just like an old Range Rover. The leather seats are very comfortable actually. If you had to spend the whole day in the Staria for work, you'd be okay. There's electric adjustment with a lumbar support. The seats are perforated, but unfortunately in this Elite model, they're not heated or cooled. In terms of visibility, it's really good. I've got a great view out the front here, good visibility through the rear vision mirror and giant wing mirrors here, which give you a great view of the sides of the car. The back seat of the Staria, and there is so much room back here. I mean, I'm 190 centimetres tall behind my own seating position, and there is so much room back here, I could quite easily hang another bag off the back of the front seat here with the hook. And there's a, a nice little map pocket here too. In the centre console, we've got a, another push-out tray with two more cup holders, some additional storage down the bottom, and two USBs. Mountains of headroom, separate climate controls up here on the ceiling. The leather seats are pretty comfortable, more than enough room for three adults uh, across the back bench here. Another row of seating behind us, which does look a little bit tighter, but still more than enough room. And if you had to spend a bit of time back here, look, it's not a Mercedes-Benz Vito, it's not luxury, but it is perfectly comfortable. So driving the Staria, you really do get a sense of just how big this car is. In fact, it feels a little bit more like a bus than a van. Where the Kia Carnival feels like a smaller car to drive, the Staria just feels large. You have a lot of road presence. On some of these tight corners, you really do have to slow right down. I mean, this car is pretty dynamically hideous. <laughs> it's just, and that's not really a criticism of the Staria itself, it's more just the class that it's in. Minivans are just not really dynamically that great to drive. There's three drive modes, Eco, Normal and Sport, and Sport is a, an interesting choice of words because it doesn't really give out any extra sporty performance at all. It really just hangs onto the gears longer and makes a bit of noise. Dynamically, you're not going to be taking corners any faster in sport mode. Tip of the hat to Hyundai for going out with such a bold design, especially for a commercial vehicle like this. The van it replaces looked really quite conservative by comparison, and this is pretty edgy. So is the Staria a better people mover than the Kia Carnival? Well, I think it really depends on what you're going to be using it for. If you're a family and you've got three or more kids, then maybe the Carnival might be a better option. It's a little more user-friendly, a little bit of a nicer place to be, perhaps. The Staria, with its cool looks, is maybe better for a uh, airport shuttle sort of situation. If you've got to move large numbers of adults around all day long, then maybe the Staria would where you'd want to be. And the Staria would be a great airport shuttle. I mean, look at the front of it. It looks like an aeroplane. 